flow. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to shade and draw um, your cube today. So I'm going to enlarge this so that we can see my paper. I'm going to just focus my camera for a second. Um, here is an example of what you're going to be doing today. So you need to draw and shade in one cube. I'm going to be showing you how to do this with multiple materials. I know I have four on my paper and I'm showing you pencil shading. I'm also showing you marker shading with cross hatching and scribble shading with a pen. Um, but you only need to pick one of these. So you need a piece of paper. It can be any kind of paper. It can be a piece of printer paper. It can, ha it can have something on it, like this paper here has stuff on the back um, that I no longer need. So I'm gonna use it to make art. The other thing you are gonna need is something to draw a straight edge with. It could be um, a ruler if you have one. I have this little ruler that would work. I have my school ID. This card or like a library card or something would work really well. Um, I also have just a notebook, like a tat, like a post-it note. This is a straight edge I could trace with. Um, the edge of a folder would work really well. So anything that's going to give you a straight line. I'm also going to be using my value scale as a reference to look at so that I know what different values I can make with my scribble, my hatching, my pointillism, my stippling, or pencil. I'm going to be using a pencil. Just a regular wooden pencil. I'm also going to be using a pen, just a gel pen, um, and I'm going to be using a marker. You only need a pencil. If that's all you have, embrace that. That's what we use, okay? So let's get started. Uh, we are taking a 2D square, and we are going to be transforming it into um, a 3D cube, okay? There are a couple ways that you can do this. Um, one way that you may remember from maybe middle school or elementary school on how to draw a cube would be like this, where you draw one, overlap it, and connect the corners. That is a good cube, but that's not the kind that we're gonna do, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing something called two point perspective. And we're gonna start with our straight edge. This is just, like I said, my school ID. And I'm going to draw a vertical line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the two horizontal edges, but I'm going to be drawing these lines on a diagonal. And this is going to look like an arrow. I don't want this as tall, so I'm going to erase that. Now from here, I'm going to line up my straight edge or my ruler or whatever I'm using to get that straight line. Um, with the bottom edge, and I'm going to slide it up to the top of my line so that I can have a parallel line. These two lines are parallel, meaning they run side by side and they don't intersect with one another. I'm going to do the same thing here. Line this up. Slide it. Like so. Looks kind of like a menu or a book. So now we're going to go with the vertical line and we're going to slide this over. We're going to do it the other way. Line it up. Slide it over. So then we just need the back edges. And I'm just going to kind of sketch which way they're going to go. But I'm going to get those to be more accurate with my straight edge lining up with the edge of my cube. Now yours might end up looking more like a rectangular prism and that's okay as well. Um, as long as you get a 3D-ish shape, okay? So now um, I'm going to draw this. I'm gonna do this three more times so you can see how it's done in case you need Start with my verticals, I'm drawing three more. I'm going to do all the steps at the same time for each of these cubes. So this is my bottom edge that makes kind of like an arrow appearance, like so. And then I'm going to line this up and slide it to the top of my line. I 
that's just the right side of my cube. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the left side. And I'm gonna do my verticals. Vertical means up and down. These lines go, they travel in the direction of up and down, up and down. Again, you only need to draw one cube. If you do draw more than one, you want to take photos of them, though, for this assignment because it's going to show that you put a lot of effort into this. So and I want to see that. So when I'm grading it, I know that you really did your very best um, effort. Remember, I'm looking for that your effort. I'm looking at that you completed the activity. I am not looking for perfect, okay? This is practice. Um, we are not aiming for perfection. We are just aiming for our best effort and completing it. Where are my little cubes? This one looks more like a little rectangular prism, but that's okay. So I'm gonna start shading this in. I do prefer a pencil. Um, it could be any kind of like wooden pencil that I prefer over say a mechanical pencil. Mechanical pencils are nice for this part, drawing it, but I don't really like them for shading in my cubes. So if I take a look at one that I already did, you'll notice that there's a dark value, a medium value, and a light value, and then of course the shadow. You wanna imagine that the sun is shining in whatever direction you choose, and the sun's going to be the lightest on that side and the darkest on the opposite side. So that's what we're gonna go for. We are gonna pretend the sun is here. This is gonna be our lightest gray our darkest gray and our medium gray. So when I do this, I can look at that value scale that I made, whether it was a digital one or a paper version. If you need a reference point, I do like to shade going in up and down direction and then I switch it and go side to side so that can even out my lines so I don't have those pencil lines. I wanna make it as smooth of a gray, dark, dark gray as possible. This should be your darkest value. I'm gonna show you this again on all of my other cubes using different materials. I am gonna switch pencils because I like this one better. This is just a Dollar Tree pencil, but I really like this one for value. If you have drawing pencils at home, not that I expect you to, but some of you do, you would wanna use a B pencil when you get drawing pencils, they have an H or a B on them. You would wanna find a B pencil, um, I would say a two, four, or six B. Six B would be the best, but if you have the others, that would work too. So that's my darkest value. I am gonna come down here and show you on this guy, this again. Yeah, I'm doing this in pencil. The nice thing about pencil is if I go outside the edges, I can clean that up with uh, an eraser, any kind of eraser. Remember, we use what we have. Don't worry about what you don't have. So now I'm gonna show you this in uh, ink. And I'm just using, this is just a gel pen that I have, just a regular, like, one good for taking, like, notes in math class. And I'm going to be doing this in scribble shading. It's still going to be my darkest value. If I need to reference my value scale, I can look at this one for my darkest scribble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace my cube first. I could use my ruler, but I'm not being that picky. And then I'm just going to start scribbling this in. And I want to make my scribbles as close as possible so that we're making it look like a dark value and it's hiding the lightness of the paper. 
You could do this with any kind of pen. So next I'm going to go into my marker. I'm just going to use, this is just a Crayola permanent marker, kind of like a Sharpie, but Crayola's version. And I'm going to outline first. And then I'm going to do hatching for this. Hatching is lines that go the same direction. And again, I'm going for the darkest value. So I want these lines to be close together and be many of, many of them. Now we're going into our medium value. This is just pencil. Next is my scribble shading. Hatching. And we're gonna make our round all over again now with our lightest value. Remember, this is the side that the sun is shining on, so this is going to be your lightest value. Barely touching. The pressure changes and um, how much I've touched the paper. Next, we're going to do our scribble. Very little. Hatching. Now it's time for our shadows. Our shadows are going to be on this darker side. I just like to sketch in where my shadows are going. I'm not putting the finishing edge there because I actually want to fade my shadow out. So I just kind of sketched that out. And this is going to be from dark to light. It's going to be darker, closer to where the base of that cube is sitting on your table or your surface. And it's going to lighten up as it gets further away. If you have a Q-tip at home or um, like tissue, like for your nose or whatever, um, you could blend this out with a Q-tip if you wanted. Just make sure you ask before you take stuff from your bathroom. I'm just trying to make that little transition between the darkest value and the medium value a little smoother. That's what I'm doing here. I'll show you that again here on this one. Again, I start with a darker value. And then I lighten up my pressure as I go further out from my cube. Now this little guy here is going to get his little scribble shadow. Again, I'm going to scribble really tight and close so that I get a darker value closer to my object where it's sitting on the ground. And then I'm going to start opening that scribble up. 
to not, so that it just kind of fades. And then I'm going to go into my hatching. Just like that. So now what you're going to do is you are going to give this a go. You can stop and pause this video. You can watch whatever steps you need to. Um, and then you are going to do your sphere video, which will be up next. All right. Thank you.